I look back at that record. I'm sure you guys look back at that record sonically and musically and and creatively. It it it, uh, it came together and and uh, we created a great a great <laughs> record, a great listening experience from from front to back. <laughs> Purple was the second studio album from the Stone Temple Pilots and was a huge success for the band, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, eventually going on to sell over 6 million copies. Two tracks, Big Empty and Lounge Fly, were recorded in 1993. However, the rest of the album was recorded in March of 1994 at Southern Tracks Recording, with the album being released just a few months later in June of 1994. The recording and mixing of Purple came together very quickly. The producer, Brendan O'Brien, who worked with STP on their first five studio albums, wanted to work quickly on the album and get it recorded and done just as fast as they could. Brendan wasn't one to spend a lot of time on records. He, he would say, he would say, you know, if we're, if we're going to do this, uh, <laughs> well, he, he would say, all right, you know, we're, we're going to do this for, you know, I'm going to lose interest. You know, we just set up in there like we were live. He, his thing was like, bring in your live gear. Let's put a PA in here. I mean, there's 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 leakage and all on that record. I mean, we we tra like I said, we tracked that record in eleven days and mixed in you know two weeks. We were done. The album contains eleven tracks of hard rock music interwoven with softer moments on songs such as the acoustic Pretty Penny. Kitchenware and Candy Bars, and Still Remains. Lead singer Scott Weiland noted that the songs on Purple took on much more of a personal meaning. Because of certain things surrounding the, the period of writing and recording, it, we were going through some very personal traumas within the band. Um, and so the writing of the album <clears throat> for myself, because uh, I do the fact that I write the words, um, I was doing a lot of, uh, I would I guess I'd say, reflecting and thinking and uh, internalizing things. So it was a very personal album to me. Three singles were released from Purple, Big Empty, Vaseline, and one of the group's most well-known hits, Interstate Love Song. The album's first single, Big Empty, would later appear on the soundtrack to The Crow. The Crow soundtrack reached number one in 1994, and a couple of weeks later, Purple reached the number one spot too, putting the band on the top of the charts twice in 1994. When we were writing the songs and recording the songs, I mean, obviously, uh, there was a little bit of thought given to, you know, what the title might be. Um, we weren't concerning ourselves with it necessarily, uh, you know, um, throughout the day, but uh, we were just talking about how the album was turning out together, having uh, dinner, and um, one of us mentioned that it, sound, it sounded purple, um, and so just sort of stuck. People sometimes talk about the curse of the sophomore slump, but we didn't pay any heed to that, said bassist Robert DeLeo when talking about their second record, Purple. We knew that the songs we had were pretty special. And one of those songs that was very special to the album and arguably the biggest hit from Purple was Interstate Love Song. Bassist DeLeo composed the song while sitting in the front passenger seat of the Winnebago Motorhome the band were touring across North America in. I wrote it on a nylon string guitar that cost $25, DeLeo said. It began as a bossa nova tune, but I didn't think people would like that so much, so I added a country riff and a melody I had floating around in my head. According to DeLeo, the process of writing the song only took around 10 minutes, but he knew straight away that he had come up with something of considerable value. It was Scott Weiland that came up with the interstate part in the song's title. And the song's lyrics, also written by Weiland, dealt with the somewhat rocky relationship he was having with his then fiance. Weiland was battling with drug addiction at the time of recording Purple, he would call his fiance Janina Castaneda on the phone each night, maintaining that he was clean. And this is where you get one of the themes from the song that deals with broken promises. Wyland later admitted, 
The words are about the lies I was trying to conceal while making the Purple Record. DeLeo said, As a writer, Scott always was very poetic. He also liked to leave the listener to make up their own minds as to a song's interpretation. The album cover art features a child riding a Japanese mythical creature accompanied by a quintet of fairies above the creature and the child, all taking place on a cloudy background. The album title is written as a Chinese character on the cover and does not appear anywhere else on the packaging, with the exception of the UK and European limited edition vinyl release. No track listing appears on the back cover, which instead displays the image of a cake with the phrase 12 gracious melodies. But wait a minute, the album's only got 11 tracks, right? So what's all this 12 gracious melodies stuff about? Well, track 11, Kitchenware and Candy Bars, contains a hidden track named My Second Album. The second album, 12 gracious melodies, worth less than. The song was performed by Richard Peterson, a musician who happens to be a big fan of Johnny Mathis, hence the reference to him in the song. Peterson revealed that the first paycheck he received for his track's inclusion on Purple was for $10,000 and that he would receive the same amount for every million copies sold. The Japanese release of Purple also contains a bonus track. It's a live version of the song Andy Warhol as track number 12. Somebody told me I know where to go Somebody showed me I was last to know Sail me down the river Sail me down the river Sail me down the river a 25th anniversary super deluxe edition of Purple was released in 2019. The 3 CD 1 LP set includes a newly remastered version of the original studio album on both CD and vinyl plus unreleased versions of album tracks and rarities, along with an unreleased full concert recording from 1994. So this is an absolute classic Stone Temple Pilots album. Everything they released, in my opinion, all six of their studio albums with Scott Weiland as the lead singer, they're all good, solid albums. Some are a bit better than others, depending on what you prefer. Purple would be my number one, STP album. It's just so good from start to finish. Handpicking some of my favorite songs from this album, well, I could almost just say the whole album, but I mean Meat Plow, what an awesome way to start off the album. I remember first hearing that tune over at a friend's house and thought this song just cranks. Why haven't I heard this before? This is awesome. Vaseline, Interstate, Love Song, and Big Empty, they are some of STP's best ever tunes in my opinion. Other tracks like Lounge Fly, Still Remains, Army Ants, and the final track on the album, Kitchenware and Candy Bars. That is one awesome song. A really great way to finish off the album. There's kind of a bit of everything on this album. There's some hard rockers on there, softer acoustic moments mixed in with some grunge rock ballads, you might call them. This album kind of has it all in that respect. The album sequencing here is spot on. All the songs seem to be in the right place and they really do flow on well from one another. It's just a really easy listen and a really good listen. The overall sound and production here is great. The album has a certain tone to it, a certain feel, a certain sound. It just rocks and it rocks hard. That's STP's Purple. So thanks heaps guys for tuning into the video and we will catch you next time. Listen to 12 great tunes playing on your stereo, dining and dancing to entertain on the piano, the second album. 
Twelve gracious melodies to listen include this number. Keeping you company